said, I welcome everyone tonight to our Tuesday Leadership Development session in Jesus' name. I pray that God will speak to every heart. And what he says will benefit and profit us in our personal lives, in our ministries, and in everything God has ordained for our lives in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name for bringing us together. Thank you for your servants, brothers and sisters, our leaders, our overseers, everyone. We're asking, Lord, tonight, you speak your word to your every heart in Jesus' name. And we pray that your word will profit everyone. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Look at the Psalms we have studied tonight. You'll discover at the top of every Psalm, from Psalm 38, 39, 40, 41, you'll find the Psalms of David. A title on each of the Psalms. The Psalm of David. We're picking from Psalm 40, verses 8, 9, and 10. And I want you to still remember that this Psalm 40 in its entirety is a psalm of David. We're looking at Psalm 40 and reading from verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Although this is applicable to the Lord Jesus Christ, but it's applicable to David because David said, I as a person, I as a man, I as a child of God, I delight to do thy will, O oh my God, yea, or yes, verily, truly, thy law is within my heart. It tells us in verse 9, it says, I, still talking about David, I, talking about him as king, talking about him as a prophet, prince, and preacher over the people. He said, I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. He had the whole nation before him. And he had all the various tribes and the nation. And he looked at the nation and he said, it's a great congregation. I have preached thy righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, behold, I have not refrained my lips. O Lord, thou knowest. Look at verse 10. It says, I, still talking about himself. This is his testimony and this is his commitment. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. The righteousness you have given me, the redemption you have given me, and all the revelation you have given me of the righteousness of the Almighty God. I didn't just have that in my heart. I brought it out. I revealed it to other people. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed, I have not hidden, I have not taken away from taking it away from people. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. David said he delighted to do the will of God and he's speaking on behalf of Christ and he's also speaking on behalf of every believer and every minister. Tonight we're looking at the message, the true minister's delight in the will of God. The true minister's delight in the will of God. In fact, as you look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 13, you will see what the Almighty God Himself appreciated in David and what He looked for, why He was going to pick up on Him and use Him and place Him on the nation of Israel. He says in Acts chapter 13, verse 22. And when he had removed him, that is when God had removed Saul, the first king of Israel, he raised up unto them, he raised up unto the children of Israel, David to be their king, 
to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, look at this, which shall fulfill all my will. I have found David. And that's what God is still looking up to today because God says, I'm God, I change not. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ is looking for today because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He wants to find a man. He wants to find a woman. He wants to find a minister that will be at the heart of the Almighty God who will fulfill all my will. Underline that in your Bible and let that be the motto for you, the watchword for you that the Lord has chosen you. The Lord has called you and the Lord has made you a minister and if something is looking for, he wants you to make up your mind, you will fulfill all his revealed will. Look at verse 36. In verse 36, for David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God. You notice that his own generation. Think about your own generation. Think about your own community. Think about your own family. And think about the generation you, that you belong to. David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God. I delight to do thy will, O God. Your law, thy law is in my heart. And in serving his own generation, he was doing the will of God, the calling of the will of God, the commission into the will of God, the commitment into the will of God, the consecration into the will of God is that you will serve your generation with all your strength, with all your ability, with all your skill, with all your intelligence, with all your contacts, with everything you have and with all the connections you have that you will serve your own generation by the will of God. The Lord is saying, there are people that are searching, I'm looking for the will of God, I'm searching for the will of God. Here is the will of God. The will of God is very plain. The will of God is that you will serve your own generation. Whatever else you do, you'll be connected with that. Whatever else you do, you'll be pointing at that. That I'm in the will of God. How do I know I'm in the will of God? I am serving my own generation. That is the will of God. And then it says, he fell on sleep. He didn't die until he served his own generation. You will not die until you serve your own generation. And you'll fulfill the will of God in Jesus' name. And then he said he saw corruption. When he said he saw corruption, that means his body saw corruption. The spirit and the soul go to God immediately a believer dies. And so immediately he died, he went to the Lord, his spirit, his soul went to the Lord, but his body was in the grave, his body saw corruption. You say, how do we say that? You see, not an Old Testament person, yes, Abraham was an Old Testament personality. Moses was an Old Testament personality. And you know that those Old Testament personalities were told when Lazarus died, angels carried him, they carried his spirit into Abraham's bosom. Abraham was still alive over there, but the body saw corruption here in the world. And the same thing with Moses that appeared at the Mount of Transfiguration, the spirit and the soul goes to heaven. Remember Stephen? Stephen said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And then he died and his body was taken by the brethren, by the believers into the grave. The body sees corruption, but the soul, the spirit goes to be with the Lord. We're looking at the message today, the true ministers delight in the will of God. 
you delight in the will of God. I delight in the will of God. Every true minister must delight in the will of God. Three things we're looking at in the message today. Number one, Christ's delight in the will of God. Christ's delight in the will of God. And he is a forerunner. He is the one that showed that maximum, total, complete, 100% delight in the will of God. God. You know, he said, I must be about my father's business. The work he has given me to do, I must finish. He delighted in the will of God. I came from heaven not to do my own will, but to do the will of him that sent me. Christ's delight in the will of God. Number two, Christ-like devotion to the will of God. When you become a Christian, you become a new creature in Christ, you become a child of God, a daughter of God, and when you are called into the ministry, you become a minister of God, and you are following after the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ and the kind of commitment, consecration, devotedness the Lord wants you to have is that you'll have the same kind of devotion as the Lord Jesus Christ to the will of God, Christ-like devotion to the will of God, the will of man, yourself, it might uh, want to rear up its head, and the will of society, and the will of your family, but you as a man of God, you as a woman of God, you as a minister of God, your focus and your center, your attention and your affection and your commitment and your consecration to the will of God so that you too, like the Lord Jesus Christ, will have devotion, devotedness, consecration, total commitment, submission, surrender to the will of God. Christ-like devotion to the will of God. Point number three, courageous declaration of the word of God. You cannot be a minister and say you are in the will of God and you are not declaring the word of God, publicizing the word of God, telling the lost how they will be saved, how they come into the kingdom. Courageous declaration of the word of God. We'll come to point number one. Point number one is Christ delight in the will of God. Look at Psalm 40 verse 7. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. Now when you read the Psalms, you need to understand that the Psalms sometimes will refer to two personalities. One present and the next one to come. And so, as we look at verses 7 and 8, let's look at verse 8 now. It says in verse 8, I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. This reference has a double application, one to David and two to the son of David, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at the, look at the fulfillment of this in Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, reading from verse 7. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7, this is the application to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, above when he said sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin offering for sin offering for sin thou wouldest not neither at at pleasure therein which are offered by the law it's referring to the old covenant old testament and it says you do not have pleasure in all those animal sacrifices and now in verse 9 in verse 9 then said he lo i come that's talking about christ now lo i come to do thy will O god he taketh away the first first covenant the old covenant that he may establish the second 
the new covenant and then we look at verse 10 it says by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all but looking then at Christ's delight in the will of God Christ's delight in the will of God three things we're looking at here number one is first and foremost satisfaction in God's will first and foremost satisfaction in God's will as you consider Christ is first satisfaction my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work the first and the foremost satisfaction in god's will number two is faithful and fruitful sacrifice as god's will he knew that god's will is not just to maybe lie on a bed of roses or just take an easy life he knew that the sacrifice he will offer for our salvation and for our sanctification is the will of the father is faithful and fruitful sacrifice as god's will number three is full and final submission to god's will is full and final submission to god's will the father did not force him he said nobody took my life takes away my life from me i give my life i surrender my life that i might take it up again it was submission that he did as a result of his pleasure his delight in the will of god number one is first and foremost satisfaction in god's will already we have read in uh, hebrews chapter 10 look at verse 7 it says then i then said i know i come in the volume of the book it is reaching of me to do thy will O god that as you are following christ as a child of god as you are following christ as a minister of god as you are following christ a preacher and overseer a pastor in a local church i come when I come to church, I come. When I come to the district, I come. When I come to any congregation, I come. I'm not here to do my will. I'm not here to fulfill my pleasure. Like the Lord Jesus Christ, I come, I come, I come to do thy will. Oh God, look at verse 9. In verse 9, it says, Then said he, Lo, I come. Always tell yourself, I'm going to be like Christ. I, I want to counsel. I, I come to a new congregation. I come to my regular congregation. I come to the Sunday service. I come to the people that are waiting as I'm coming in your heart, in my heart. I'm saying, I come, I come. I'm not going to preach what I like. I'm not going to say what I like, like the Lord Jesus Christ, like he came into this world to do the will of the Father. I come come to do thy will O god he taketh away the false he taketh away the old and he that he may establish the second that must be that was the false and the foremost satisfaction of the lord jesus christ look at john chapter 4 we're looking at verse 34 john chapter 4 we're looking at verse 34 jesus says unto them my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. They were wondering because he was hungry, he was weary, he was tired and he was by the well and the disciples went to buy food and they came back now and he wasn't eager to eat anymore. He said, my satisfaction. The fulfillment of my life what satisfies me what saturates me is the bread of life that i have and i give to others the water of life that i have and i give to others my meat my satisfaction is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work it tells us in chapter 5 verse 30 the reason why he came from heaven it said i can of my own self do nothing 
as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because, because I seek not my own will. Look at Christ, our Savior. Look at Christ, our Lord. He didn't have all this, you know, I want to have this done. I want to have that done. He said, because I seek not my own will. What brings disunity in the midst of the children of God? What brings division in the midst of the church of the living God? And what brings all this as scattering and argument? Because somebody is coming to seek his own will. Because somebody does not want to bend to the will of God. If you are bending, submitting to the will of God, I am bending, submitting to the will of God. And we are all united on the will of God. And I say, I don't have anything. I don't have any goal. I don't have any ambition. All I want is the will of God. And you say, you don't have any goal. You don't have any ambition. And you don't have anything you're looking for. All you want is the will of God we will be one when we're all centered and focused and consecrated and committed to just that one thing the will of God when we're like Christ Christ said because I seek not my own will but the will of the Father which has sent me look at chapter 6 and verse 38 john chapter 6 verse 38 is telling us for i came down from heaven he knew where he came down from and he knew where he came to and he said i came down from heaven not to do my own will uh, can I ask you now you have come to the midst of the people of God and you say you are a leader among us a preacher among us you are a pastor over there you are an overseer over there uh, have you taken uh, the walk as if this is my baby this is my work and nobody must look at this and I'm isolating myself from the people of God that's not the way to do it Jesus said I came down from heaven not to do my own will but the will of him that sent me that's why he pleased the father every time you please the almighty God every time your life will be a joy to heaven and your life will be a joy to the heart of the heavenly father in Jesus name look at the second part here the second part we're talking about is faithful and fruitful sacrifice as God's will is faithful and fruitful sacrifice as God's will actually he came to give his life as our substitute as our savior and as our sacrifice in first corinthians chapter 5 reading from verse 7 first corinthians chapter 5 we're looking at verse 7 it says "Purge out therefore the old leaven for ye that ye may be new love as ye are unleavened for even christ our passover is sacrificed for us even christ our passover is sacrificed for us you understand all those sacrifices have been given from the old testament and all those sacrifices of the old testament they were waiting for their fulfillment in the new testament and jesus knew they were waiting every levite or the levite will come and sacrifice the priest will come and sacrifice and the father will be reminding the son they're waiting for you they're waiting for the final sacrifice they're waiting for the acceptable sacrifice and then it came to the time of the prophets and the prophets began to talk about sacrifice and every time they sacrifice the father will say they're waiting for you he is the final sacrifice is the faithful sacrifice and then he came to the new testament and then at the age of 12 he was in the temple and he saw those priests and all those religious people sacrificing sacrificing and he knew they are waiting for me 
the sacrifice that was to finalize everything and now he says when he was to go to the cross peter didn't understand and peter said that will never happen to you say so get there behind me what they have been waiting for from all generations what they have been waiting for in all those liturgical sacrifices and i come now to fulfill the will of god and you don't understand get thee behind me and then when it was to be taken up so that he can fulfill that sacrifice peter threw out his sword and cut up the ear of that person and said put put away your sword you don't understand what i've come from and you don't understand what i'm going to do to fulfill all the sacrifices of the ages the cup that my father has given me will i not drink it and he gave himself as christ a passover who is sacrificed for us he was faithful and the sacrifice has borne fruit and is passed that on to you too that as you come you understand fulfilling the will of god like christ did you are going to sacrifice time and talent and treasure and possession and whatever it is you will do the will of god brothers and sisters i said you will do the will of god look at the third part there now in the third part that is his full and final submission to god's will his full and final submission to god's will now as we look at christ he knew that the sacrifice the will of god will not be something pleasant and something totally joyful why do we say that he was in heaven from all eternity and when the angels were created the angels saw him and they worshiped him and he was he was over there enjoying the fellowship of the father but now he's coming to this world to do the will of the father the pharisees well you know talk against him people unknown people they will speak at him and they will the false witnesses will come this is the one from all eternity who had been with the heavenly father and he enjoyed the worship he enjoyed the praises of the angels but now look at what's happening now and they're dragging him dragging him there and they're removing his garment and they're preparing the cross and they want to nail him to the cross and he knew what will happen and yet he had said no i come to do thy will O god and it wasn't going to be an easy thing but he submitted himself you know as we're doing the will of god it's not always something you know very happy and joyful uh, there are some people if i give you a practical illustration in marriage you know the, the pray for the will of god somebody will make me happy make me laugh every time and give me joy supply whatever i need once i say i need this the money will come out he'll never say but look at the recession look at this now marriage will be everything that i ever dreamt of and now they're married and a little problem they forget the will of god they look at the problem and they allow what they see to totally erase and to cancel and to destroy commitment to the will of god i know that's not you you are committed to your family you are committed to your marriage and whatever is there little problem little challenges and not enough of this not enough of that you will not divorce your husband i was waiting for a good amen you will not separate from your wife whatever is it is the will of god will be to the very end in your life in your marriage in jesus name now the will of god in christ i want you to look at in luke chapter 22 and we're reading from verse 41 in luke chapter 22 reading from verse 41 let's see here how he submitted completely unreservedly to the will of the father and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and he kneeled down and prayed he kneeled down and prayed 
there are some areas of the will of God, even in ministry, you will not be able to fulfill. You will give up. You'll say, I'm fed up. You'll say, I'm tired. You'll say, I didn't know there are a lot of thorns on my pathway in ministry. Until you pray, until you get to the Lord in that, in that ministry, like Jesus Christ, there is the final scene he ought to do. Understand, he had multiplied bread for the people thousands of them but that's not the main reason he came to the world he had healed the sick and everybody said we never saw it like this before he had performed miracles he had turned water into wine he had done quite a lot of things he had walked on the water but that wasn't the very thing the final thing he was to do the final thing he was to do is to give his life for the redemption and salvation of humanity and all those other things will fade into insignificance if he doesn't do this final thing and so he had to kneel down and he prayed look at verse 42 in verse 42 say father if thou be willing remove this cup from me nevertheless not my will but thine be done there are times we need to pray like that in the ministry you know that this is the will of God, but the road is rough, but the mountain is high, but the challenges are many. And it's like, if I can have another person to take this away from me, I think I want to retire now, I think I want to sit down now. It's like, you know, the road is so rough, and the, and the challenges are so many, another person can come and do this. I think, you know, I want to be relieved of what I'm doing. That's the time you need to remember the will of God like Jesus Christ our Lord like Jesus Christ our Savior like Jesus Christ a perfect example and then he said nevertheless not my will but thine be done the same thing in marriage there are times there are some situations that may come in-laws are there and personal internal problems they're there he doesn't understand me and she doesn't understand me I don't know whether I can I another month in this marriage another year in this marriage there are times you need to go on your knees you know that this is the will of god until death do us part and you are able to say in prayer nevertheless not my will but thine be done there are times you are in the church and maybe misunderstanding maybe discipline i will say this i understand discipline I like discipline, but this one is not justified. This one is not right. How could this happen to me? There are times, but you know, that this is the will of God, that you are the body of Christ, you are the children of God, and the Lord has sent you here to get this done. And then you have to pray that Jesus Christ, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And then we're told in verse 43, and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Grace will come to you. Power will come to you. Unction will come to you. And whatever it is you are finding difficult, power will come from heaven and make it easy for you in Jesus' name. Look at verse 44. In verse 44, and being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. But he did it. And that's why you are saved today. He did it. That's why we're now in the kingdom of God. And because he did it and he had the grace to do what ought to be done, he is passing that grace unto you. You will climb every mountain. You'll go through every rough road. And what the will of God for you is in your family, in your marriage, in the ministry, in the profession where you are, in the place of work where you are, the will of God you will do to the finishing line in Jesus' name. I will. I will. Nothing will stop your journey halfway in Jesus' name. Let's come to point number two now. Christ-like devotion 
to the will of God. That is, we who are Christians, we who are children of God, and we who are ministers, we have Christ-like devotion to the will of God. Look at Psalm 40 again, verse 8. And I want to remind you that when David wrote this, number one, it was true of him as well as true of the lord jesus christ i delight to do thy will oh my god yea thy law is within my heart thy law is within my heart to do thy will that's my delight there are three things we're looking at number one purposefully discovering god's will from heaven purposefully discovering God's will from heaven. If you're not looking up to heaven, you'll not discover God's will. If you're only asking your friends and your neighbors and your relatives and people on earth, the people who don't have any connection with heaven, you will never discover the will of God. You want to get saved and you're asking, uh, you know, your colleagues and your friends who are sinners like yourself, you'll never discover the will of God in salvation. You want to get sanctified and you're asking people who do not know anything about sanctification, what do you think about it? I want to be holy. So that I will be living a pure life consistently without sin and you are asking somebody who does not know the false letters ABC of salvation or sanctification you will never know and then you want to have the power of the Holy Ghost in your life and you are asking from people who only have the spirit of man and the spirit of the age and the spirit of our time you will never know if you're going to discover the will of God you need connection with heaven number one purposefully discovering god's will from heaven number two persistently doing after you have discovered it after you have known it after it is revealed unto you persistently doing god's will from the heart number three perseveringly defending god's will in holiness let's look at number one purposefully discovering God's will from heaven. What's God's will? Look at 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3, we're looking at verse 9. It tells us the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering towards what? Not willing that any shall perish this God's will. God's will is that everyone will come to repentance. Everyone will be saved. Not willing that any should uh, perish, but that all should come to repentance. The very first thing you know about God's will in your life, repentance faith in Christ, salvation. That's the very first thing. And any other thing that is going to be the will of God must not contradict that salvation. Somebody is saying, how do I know the will of God? Anything that will take you away from salvation, anything that will take you away from that conversion anything that will take you away from that repentance anything that will draw you away from the salvation you have got whatever it is cannot be the will of god anything that will make you corrupt anything that will make you go in the path of destruction to be lost forever and ever that cannot be the will of god what's the will of god that all shall come to repentance and then he tells us in john chapter 7 verse 17 john chapter 7 verse 17 if any man will do his will he shall know if any man will do his will he shall know what's that telling us god does not play pranks he does not play game with the revelation of his will god is not going to reveal his will to those who are curious they're talking about the will of god i want to go and ask god oh god are you less busy now understand that even those who are kings even those who are presidents here on earth 
in a little nation like in our nation you cannot just bump at them and say i just thought i should come and see the president i don't really have anything to ask that is very serious but i was less busy and then i thought who am i going to see now okay i will see the president Presidents don't give themselves to people who have nothing doing. The people who just say, wake up, I want to go and see the president. The king of kings, the lord of lords, the king of the whole universe, the almighty God. He does not have time to be revealing something to somebody who is just curious. I just want to know, I'm just thinking, what if I knew this? You must be of decisive mind that you want to do the will of God. Only then will he reveal himself unto you. If any man will do his will, he shall know the doctrine whether I speak of God or whether I speak of myself. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, it says, He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory, uh, the glory is glory that sent him the same is true and no unrighteousness in him. What is telling us is that if you want to know the will of God, you must be willing to do that will of God. Oh Lord, I'm asking for this in your will. Okay, before I give you an answer, will you do it if I tell you, yes Lord, that's when he revealed to you. I want to know your will in marriage. Will you do it if I really told you the one I've appointed for you? Lord, yes, I will. That's when you're revealed to you. I want to know what ministry I will have. How do I serve God with all my strength? I have all this knowledge, all this revelation, all this opportunity. I'm looking for the will of God to do the will of God. Will you do it if I really told you? Yes, Lord, that's when he revealed himself unto you. You are purposefully seeking the Lord to discover God's will coming from heaven. Number two, number two is persistently doing God's will from the heart. That's how we do the will of God. We cannot do the will of God with lip service. We cannot do the will of God with uh, you know, a flippant, shallow, superficial attitude. You want to do the will of God, you come with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and you are focused on wanting to do that will, whatever wind may bloom, and whatever storm may come, you have decided that you are going to do that will, and persistently you want to do the will. And let's look at uh, Ephesians chapter 6, and we're reading from verse 6, Ephesians Chapter 6, and we're reading from verse 6, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ. Look at this, as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Uh, you know, it's common for people who are not born again, and even those who say they are born again, but they do not understand the meaning of being born again. Uh, they say, yes, I will do it, but it's not really in their mind. They have not counted the cost. And they have not looked at how far the destination is. They have not looked at the demand of the question that came to them. They have not looked at all it will take and the devotion it will take and the commitment it will take. Now, you will want a pastor in this uh, local church, will you? Yes, I will. They have not considered what it will cost. And then we need an overseer here, will you? Yes, I will. And uh, your wife, are you also going to join your husband in being a region overseer or state overseer, national overseer? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. They have not considered it. And then when it now comes, when the robber meets the road and when the challenges come, and they say, how is this, uh, you know, the will of God? And they cannot do it from their heart anymore. They are, you know, cutting corners and they are making this way excuse and excuse. If we're going to do the will of God persistently with our heart, we do the will of God from the heart, doing the will of God from the heart. You will do the will of God.
I will do the will of God. And you'll do it from your heart in Jesus' name. How does he want us to do that way? I want you to come to Matthew chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 10. Matthew chapter 6. And we're looking at verse 10. Look at this. The prayer Christ himself taught us to pray. He says, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. If the kingdom comes in your heart, the will of God will be done from your heart. If the kingdom of God comes in our church, if this is his kingdom, where he reigns and where he rules, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Who are the people doing the will of God in heaven? Can you tell me who they are? Tell me out aloud. If you are sure, you are not sorry. I don't want the pastor to say I'm wrong. If you are sure, who are those doing the will of God in heaven? Angels of God. Look at Psalm 103. Psalm 103. We're reading from verse 20. In Psalm 103, verse 20, it tells us, it says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments that do his commandments hack me in unto the voice of his word and jesus said the way the method the pattern the model we should do the will of god here on earth is as it is done in heaven by the way how do those angels do the will of god in heaven number one they do the will of god promptly Promptly, the Lord calls Angel Gabriel, the Lord calls Angel Michael, the Lord calls any of the angels go to the earth and go to Mary the Virgin or go to Daniel or go here, go there. Promptly, immediately, they do the will of God. If we're doing the will of God from the heart, we do it promptly. Our heart is there, our mind is there. Number two, they do the will of God wholeheartedly. It's not like they left something behind where they're coming from. They go to do the will of God. If they go into the mother of some sinner that the Lord has said, go there and reveal this to her. They do that will wholeheartedly. It not, it's, it's not like they are absent-minded. It's not like, am I really going to do this? Am I going to commit myself to this wholeheartedly without hesitation? Wholeheartedly without hypocrisy? They do the will of God. Number three, they do the will of God completely, completely. You know, when you are told to do something and then you go there and then you do, maybe there are five things you ought to do. One, two, three. And then you see that the person you are doing the will will of God with is not really paying attention her heart is not there his mind is not there and then you say okay that's all right then you go back to God you say I've done it like Saul did you do it completely well I did most of the things you wanted me to do the angels don't do that they do the will of God promptly they don't waste any time and they do the will of God completely and wholeheartedly and as the Lord is telling us that now we're committing ourselves and we're giving ourselves to doing the will of God persistently doing the will of God from the heart we're doing that completely and number four we're doing it also um, fearlessly you know it will be surprising if an angel came to any of the people that God sent them and then they are feverish and they are shaking and they are trembling and they cannot really declare the will of God and they're looking down as if uh, you know the will of God is reaching on the ground they come boldly and they come uh, courageously and they come fearlessly because they are coming from the almighty and they are coming from the king of kings and the lord of laws and they deliver what the lord has given them to deliver and the same thing thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven 
as you receive the will of God and you receive the ministry and then you are committed you have committed yourself to do what the Lord wants you to do you do that will fearlessly and the angels of God they do the will of God always always it's not like you know they, they've just come from one errand they've come from one trip and then they you know they need to do another thing now and they're saying but Lord can't I have some respite? Can't I have some break? Can't I have some, you know, some time? I just came back from this and from that. Always, whenever the call came to them, that's exactly what they will do. And the Lord Jesus taught us how to pray. And he said, thy will be done in earth. While we're still here on earth, as it is done in heaven. I pray it will be like that in your life, in my life, in our lives together. In Jesus' name. They do the will of God, those angels, they do the will of God sincerely, sincerely. There's no hypocrisy, there's no cover up, there's no pretense, sincerely, transparently from their heart. That's how they do the will of God. And Jesus taught us to pray. He said, thy will be done. Thy will must be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. There's no insincerity. And there is no patching up. And there is no partiality. They do the will of God. And the Lord is saying, He can so work on us. He can so develop us. He can so do His work of grace in our heart. That will do the work of God. And the will of God will do that sincerely. It will be so in every one of our lives. In Jesus' name. And they do the will of God purposefully. Purposefully. They know there's a purpose. They know there's a reason why the Lord has sent them. You know there is a purpose. You know there's a reason why you're doing what you are doing and what God has called you to. It comes to you afresh. I never thought in that direction before. Now I feel, I hear the call of God and He's sending me forth to do His will and sincerely. With all my heart, with all my soul, with everything I've got within me, I will not, you know, minimize my effort, minimize my attention, minimize my commitment. Everything I've got will go into doing the will of God and you'll do that will of God sincerely with all your heart in Jesus' name. Let's look at number three here. Number three here is per per perseveringly. Defending God's will in holiness. Perseveringly defending God's will in holiness. For how many years have you been in the ministry now? And you have been called earnestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints. Earnestly defending the faith once delivered unto the saints. I believe you are not getting tired. You will not be tired. Perseveringly, you will defend that God's will. If anybody challenges you, why are you doing what you are doing? Why are you going the way you are going? And why are you emphasizing you know, what you are emphasizing? And you know the commitment. And you know what the Lord has placed in your hand. And you are to do it for the rest of your life. You will courageously, persistently, perseveringly defend God's will in your life and in your family in Jesus' name. And look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And we are reading from verse Verse 3. First Thessalonians chapter 4, we're reading from verse 3. It says, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. This is the will of God, even your sanctification. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, it tells us, in verse 7, For God has not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness that's what you defend that's what you practice and that's what you demonstrate and that's what you do every time because that is the will of god holiness in life holiness for life in luke chapter 1 reading from verse 74 luke chapter 1 we're looking at verse 74 it tells us it says that he would grant unto us that he, that we've been delivered out of the hand 
of our enemies, you are delivered already. If you say amen, you are delivered already. God has delivered you. Enemies will not conquer you. Enemies will not derail you. Enemies will not destroy your destiny. That he would that he would grant unto us that we've been delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Look at verse 75 in holiness and righteousness before him. How many days? I mean, for your life, how many days? Have all the days of your life, and God will prolong all those days in Jesus' name. We come to point number three now. Point number three, courageous dedication to the word of God. Courageous dedication to the word of God. We're coming to Psalm 40 and we're reading from verses 9 and 10. Psalm 40 verses 9 and 10. It says in verse 9, I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. And then he says in verse 10, I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. Look at that. It says, I got the word of God, the word of salvation. I didn't hide it inside my bowels. I brought it out. I declared to the people the word of righteousness. I didn't hide that or conceal that. I gave it out to the people. Three things we're looking at. Number one, persuasively preaching God's word to Gentile congregations. Persuasively preaching God's word to Gentile congregations. Number two, publicly proclaiming God's way in general crusades. That is, it's not just confined into a church building. You go out there to the stadium. You go out there in the open air and you gather a mass of people together in their multitudes, in their millions. And then you declare the word of God, the word of salvation, the word of repentance and the word of faith in Christ. You declare clear to the people publicly proclaiming God's way in general crusades number three personally pursuing God's will before the great congregation personally doing it although others are doing it but nobody will do your work I said nobody will take your work away from you they do it, she does it, and you do it, and then everybody personally pursuing God's will before the great congregation. Let's look at number one. Number one is persuasively preaching God's word to Gentile congregations. He wants the Gentiles to hear in Acts of the Apostles chapter 15. Acts chapter 15, we're reading from verse 14. Acts chapter 15, verse 14, Simon has declared how God at the first did at the first visit the Gentiles to take out a people, to take out of them a people for his name. He wants all the Gentiles to hear. Now when we talk of Gentiles, we're talking of all people outside Israel. All people that are not Jews, our nation here is a Gentile nation. All of Africa, Gentile nations, America, Gentile nation, Europe and Europeans, Gentile nation, all the people outside the nation of Israel, the Gentiles. He wants the word to be declared to Gentile congregations because he wants to take out of them out of those gentiles a people for his name look at verse 15 in verse 15 and to this agree the words of the prophet as it is written in verse 16 after this i will return and will build again the tabernacle of david you know what that says it says this is the time 
of the Gentiles. We're preaching now to the Gentile nations and to the Gentile congregations. We preach on the field. We preach on the, at the stadium. We preach in the houses. We preach everywhere among the Gentile congregations. After that, after the Gentile time is over, and then the rapture takes place, and then we're gone, he says, the Lord will return, and he will build again the tabernacle of David, which is falling down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. In verse 17, that the residue of men might seek the Lord and all the Gentiles and all the Gentiles that's why we go to proclaim the word to them we don't only stay inside a church building preaching to believers only Christians only and the saints of God only but we go out to all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called says the Lord who doeth all these things look at verse 18 in verse 18 known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world he called you to ministry he knew he will call you he's giving you an assignment he knew he will give you the assignment he's giving you his calling he's giving you his commission he's giving you his will he had known that all along maybe you are just knowing that today maybe you are just knowing that this year maybe you are just knowing that this decade he had known it all along your heart, your life is reaching in the palm of the Lord. Your destiny is reaching in the book of God. He knows what he's calling you for. You will do it in Jesus' name. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. You are not an accident. I am not an accident. You know, some people sometimes they wonder what I am doing here. Am I sure? Of course, God knew that from the beginning of the world. You know, sometimes in our marriage, you might have a little blackout and a little discussion, little misunderstanding, and then the devil begins to say, This marriage, this family, uh, did I make a mistake? No, no, unto God are uh, all his works from the beginning of the world your life will not be an accident your family will not be an accident your ministry will not be an accident don't allow the devil to disorganize your life the lord knew before you were called now he has called you you'll be faithful to the end in jesus name Number two here, number two is publicly proclaiming God's way to a general crusade. Look at Isaiah chapter 58 and we're reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 58, we're looking at verse 1. It says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. That's when we go out and then we get all those people together in their multitudes and then it's not we're not talking to you know 10 people we're not talking to 50 people in a little uh, you know house fellowship and then we can barely raise our voice but then we come to the open and there are thousands and thousands of people there you will do it I said you will do it and then you say cry aloud cry aloud that is you raise your voice spare not lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people and show those religious people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins as you do it many people will be convicted you show them the way of salvation and they will respond and give their lives to the Lord in Jesus name in Luke chapter 1 verse 77 
Luke chapter 1, we're reading from verse 77. It tells us to give the knowledge, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of sins. That's what you do when you declare the word of Christ as a savior, the word of Christ as a redeemer, and you go into the open and you declare that word. And many people hear the word and they repent of their sins and they come to the Lord in verse 7. In verse 79, it says to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. The Lord will use you. I said the Lord will use you. All the spirit of God, anointing of God, power of God will come upon your life in Jesus' name. Number three now is personally pursuing God's will before the great congregation. Personally, personally declaring, personally pursuing God's will before the great congregation. And look at, at Galatians chapter 1, Galatians chapter 1 verse 4. In Galatians chapter 1, reading from verse 4, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from the present evil world according to the will of God we're back there according to the will of God and our father your deliverance from the present evil world is the will of God your deliverance from the works of the devil is the will of God your deliverance from the paths of darkness is the will of God. And when he delivers you from sin, he delivers you from Satan, he delivers you from spiritual powers, he delivers you from sickness, now he's going to put you at the very center of the will of God, what he had written from all eternity concerning you, that you will serve him in the will of God and you will personally pursue that to the very end of your life look at verse 15 of that same galatians chapter 1 verse 15 but when it pleased god who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace he called me by his grace in verse 16 he says to reveal his son in me that i might preach him among the heathen immediately i confide not with flesh and blood you will not doubt you will not delay dally you will not delay as he calls you, you rise up immediately and you will do the will of God in Jesus' name. Immediately, I confide not with flesh and blood. The Lord has spoken to us today about our calling, about our commission. And it is that we will be in the center of the will of God. As we round up, let's come back to Psalm 14. And we're reading from verse 7 in, in Psalm 40, reading from verse 7. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me, it's written of David, it's written of Christ, and it's written concerning you. And then in verse 8, it says, I delight, I rejoice, I take pleasure in doing thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. The Lord has written his word on the table of your heart and the Lord has accompanied that with grace and strength and power and he's saying, my son, my daughter, I want to see you running in my will. I want to see you moving in my will. I want to see you operating. I want to see you carrying out my will. Delight in that every day and let the work of God prosper in your hand and great will be your reward in eternity in Jesus' name.
why don't you rise up and tell the Lord I know this is written concerning me I know I'm not an accident I know it's not a mistake that I'm here today I've heard your word I delight to do thy will oh my God your law is within my heart open your mouth and talk to the Lord and let him do a new work of grace power strength in your life that you will run for the will of God has given you today open your mouth and talk to the Lord